In this lesson, we'll create this navbar scroll interaction using all native Webflow interactions. Let's get started. So let's add a Webflow navbar. We'll give it a class and let's give it a position of fixed to the top. We'll give it a Z index of 100 and let's make the background color transparent. Now inside of that nav, let's add a div and let's give this the class of, we'll call it nav top. And let's go ahead and give it a utility of container that we're using throughout the site. So it has padding on all sides, margin auto left and right, a max width and position relative. Now inside of that, let's add a div and give it the class of nav logo target. Since this is the target element, we'll animate. We'll give it 100% width and a five rim height. We'll give it display flex. So it stretches the children to full height and when the X axis aligns them to center. Inside of that, let's add a div with the class of nav logo element. And we want to define the size of this element. So our logo is 358 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. So on this element, we can give it a custom ratio and we'll do 3.58 wide by one tall. And let's give it a position relative. And we'll just go ahead and take this link block, put it inside that element, and we'll give it a class of nav logo cover. We'll give it position absolute to cover its full parent and 100% width, 100% height. For the logo, we could either upload it as an image or we could just copy as SVG. And when we do that, we could launch SVG import app, uh, just click in here and paste. So it adds the SVG element inside. We'll give that SVG element the same class of logo cover. So it's um, absolute to cover the parent. And let's give it this brand color here. So what happens now when we animate the height on this target element is because it's stretching the children to be full height, those children inside just shrink. And this target element has an aspect ratio, so its height's decreasing and its width is just defined using a ratio. Um, and then another thing we'll want to do with the target element is decrease its width. So we can animate from 100% width to 0% width but that child is just centered within that target. So it's not aligning to the left like we want. Now to fix that, what we can do is go ahead and add a div inside the target. We'll give it the class of nav logo container. And this container is going to hold our logo element. Now for the container, it's stretched to be full height of its parent. Let's apply flex. So it stretches its children to be full height. And on the X, it aligns them to left. Now this container is just hugging the element. So it's the size of the element. And when we decrease the width of the target, this container is just going to overflow. It's based on the size of that element, but we can give the container a max width of hundred percent. So we're saying don't get any wider than your parent. And when we do that at larger sizes above the logo width, this container is just hugging the element like so, but at smaller sizes, what we'll notice is this container has to start to shrink and fit within the target. And since this container is aligning its children towards the left, this logo inside is now aligned to the left. So we can take something that was centered at full width and convert it to align to left when we shrink it. Now that we have that set, what we'll want to do is set up for our menu button, another div. And we'll just put it right here, give it a class of nav bottom, and let's give it the same utility of container. So it has the padding and max width. And we'll go ahead and take the nav menu, move it into that, and we'll take the button element, move it in there as well. We'll delete the original container. So we have this uh, nav bottom. What we'll do is go ahead and give it a position of fixed or actually absolute to the top of its parent. So that way it's just right there at the top of the whole nav. And let's give it a height of 100%. So it fills the height of the nav as well. And let's also give this nav bottom a display flex and align to the right center. So it puts this menu icon right there in the middle. And so now this absolute bottom element is just based on the height of the whole nav, which is being defined by this target. So when we increase the height of the target, the bottom element has to increase as well. And when we decrease it, the bottom element has to shrink. Now let's go ahead and we want this button to be clickable. So to do that, we'll select the nav top and we'll give it uh, events none. So nothing in here is clickable. That way we can hover the button that's underneath it. And then we'll just select the link block and we'll give that events auto 
That way we can still hover the logo and we can hover the button either way. Now let's go ahead and give this menu button a class. We'll go ahead and give this a class of nav, we'll call it button. And let's give it a background color, a dark secondary, a radius of 100 viewport width, and let's zero out all the padding. Now let's go ahead and give this a height. I'll use four rim and let's give it a ratio of square so that when we decrease the height of this, the width is also gonna shrink because the ratio is just based on this height here. So now that we have that set, what we'll notice when we start to decrease the height of this target is that menu button just eventually overflows, not quite what we want there. So let's give this menu button a max height of 100% so it can get no taller than the available space within its parent. And that way, when we animate this target, what we'll notice is this, this caps out at a height of four rim, but it also has a max height of 100%. So once this starts to shrink, then the button element also starts to shrink. So we're gonna want to animate this now. Let's drop in a div. Let's give it a class of trigger. And this will be our trigger element. So we'll give it a position absolute. So it's just absolute to the top of the screen. We'll give it a height of 10 rim, Z index of negative one. So it's under everything. And whenever this trigger scrolls out of view, we'll animate our nav. And whenever it scrolls back into view, we'll reverse that animation. So with the trigger selected, we'll head to interactions, create an element trigger of scroll into view, apply it to the class. And whenever we scroll into view of this trigger, so we'll scroll back up, we'll have an animation here we'll create and we'll call this scrolled up. And for that, the only thing we're really animating is if we open this up, the target element here. So let's go ahead and animate its size and it's gonna be 100% width and five rim height. It'll have a duration of 0.8 seconds and it'll have an ease of in out court. So we ease the start and the end. Now let's save that and let's create when we're scrolled out of view. So we'll go ahead and duplicate this first animation here and we'll rename it and we'll say scrolled down. So whenever we're scrolled down here, we want to animate the width on this target to 0%. And we want to animate the height on this to, we'll say two rem. Now, when we preview, it doesn't really know where to start. So it kind of bugs out. It doesn't know what to animate from. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. And we'll define this first one as an initial state. And initially the width will be 100%, the height will be five rem. So it matches what was in the designer. And that way we have a clear starting and ending state there. So now we can just go ahead and save this. And when we preview, we have a start point with the logo centered, everything's larger. And as we scroll down, everything just kind of shrinks. If we scroll back up, it grows again. And that's really all we need to do to create this interaction in Webflow.